It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM, WNOV, and W293CX106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether through those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, or anywhere in between, we are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, gardening partner, best friend. Holly Barrett. Uh, behind the... Behind the uh, WNOV mics here in Milwaukee, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for all things gardening, now containing over 1,000 plus garden videos on short and long format. We're still cutting grass. It's still the middle of summer. We're only halfway through the month of August, and many of you are wondering where did the year go. Well, that just part of how life is but we're going to have uh, we're going to talk about eight things you should be doing with your seed free and chemical free grass clippings that you're probably and maybe some of you are but most of you are probably not doing this now first of all let's disclaimer here chemical free and seed free seed free is when the, you let the plant go and it begins to put a seed pot on those seeds can be viable and if you are uh, using these um, on your garden, these seeds may fall and germinate into the soil and you're going to have weeds in the garden. So that's why we want seed free. Chemical free is whenever you don't use any chemicals, especially the weed and feed stuff that has 2,4-D, which is a chemical that will leach into your soil and kill your vegetation. So let's keep those two. And there's other weed and free feeds and other chemicals that you can uh, add to your lawn that's going to hurt if you're using these in the garden. Right. So as long as it's any chemical free thing. So one thing, this is kind of neat, is you can leave them on the lawn. So if you are concerned about your grass being green and lush and uh, nice, if you leave the grass clippings on the lawn, they're going to break down. Now, if your grass is one foot tall, you don't want to leave them on the lawn. This is assuming that you trim your, your you cut your grass, you know, once a week or as needed. And um, with that being said, um, you yeah. want to leave them on the lawn, and then that way, what happens is that, that goes back into into the ground. So and we're talking about you know, it, 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 like you said, small amounts. Not like you're going to cut it for hay for cattle. Okay, right. that, that type of thing. So what will happen is grass clippings can add back up to 25% of the nutrients that the growth removes from the soil. So it'll, it's, like a, it's like a happy little cycle, like how in, in nature, in the woods or, or whatnot, how the, the soil is so lush because the leaves fall and the trees fall and break down. This is kind of the same concept right in your yard. And you can do this. I mean, you, again, we've all cut grass when we shouldn't have cut grass, and we should have cut it six days ago, and it's just mounds of grass clippings. Uh, it's not a terrible thing. Uh, some of people, you know, it's not that particular about it. Uh, secondly, uh, many of this may not apply to many of you, but maybe if you're listening on the replay on the podcast or the in-studio video, uh, animal feed. This is obviously a good supplement, a supplement for your uh, animals, uh, whatever that might be. Not all animals are heavier, uh, like cattle are heavier on, on grasses than maybe ducks or chickens, but... Um, uh, cattle feed, and again, you want chemical free, and the seeds, it's not really a big deal with the animals, but the chemicals, that's what you want to watch out for, not to be feeding animals grass clippings or grasses that have got chemicals on them. So we won't really dive too deeply into the cattle feed option on that, but that is something that uh, can be done with your grass clippings. Another thing is what we do all the time is compost. Right, so you can add them to your compost. The nice thing about it is it adds that that green portion or the uh, nitrogen. nitrogen portion. So if you want to leave them on the lawn, maybe you don't you don't like that, um, you don't like the way it looks or whatever, then you can put them into compost. Another one is uh, lawn clipping tea. We've heard about compost tea, manure tea, um, other types of teas in which you can brew the, the uh, item and then use that water to water your plants. So the way you make this tea, is you take a bucket, put your grass clippings in there, let it sit preferably in a sunny spot or mostly sunny spot for about three days, and then you strain out the grass clippings, and then you can water your plants or whatever. It's um, extract, it, extracting the uh, nutrients out of the grass clippings. Now, 
Sometimes this can be quite of a stinky procedure. Uh, as this begins to break down in the water, there is going to be, you know, this is not something you want to do when the family's coming over for, you know, a birthday party uh, in a couple of days type of thing. So that's one, one way to do it. Or maybe you want them to not stay too long. So you, you're like, we, have other, like, we have other options on that if you'd like to email us <laughs> on how to get rid of family check members my, you don't. You know, yeah. when they're staying too long, check out my grass clipping tea. Oh, yeah, that stinks. Yeah. Let me get out of here. Yeah. Uh, another so, one is mulch. mulch. We, this is our, our favorite. Oh, this thing. is our, yeah, our primary use for grass clippings. So what you do is you want to let them dry. So you would take your grass clippings, run them along your driveway or wherever so that they have a chance to dry out, and then you can use them as a mulch. And if you're using them on a bed that has no plant life in it, you can just simply pour it on the, on the bed and right. let them dry there. But the reason why we're wanting to dry out if we're going to use them around plants is because they can introduce mold, fungus, uh, diseases that can affect your plant's uh, growth and development. So that's why you're wanting to let them dry out. Whether you just let them blow in the, in the, uh, dry out in the yard, while you just blow them out the side of the lawnmower and then rake them up, or if you bag them and then dry them that way on the, on the lawn, uh, that's a, another way. And you can also, you know, do just pour it on the grass or on the on the bed like we did right so then this uh raised beds it, it's a lasagna method we, right the we, lasagna method we talked to melinda myers a couple months ago about designing a, or doing a lasagna method in your yard and you can use a lot of greens and browns right away and this is a good method if you're wanting to create a raised bed in the spring with like almost no effort uh the lasagna method of raised beds is the way to go so if you're thinking about I don't want to till up the garden like we talked about last week uh, you can go ahead no, it was a couple weeks ago we talked about getting a garden started uh, we you can just look up lasagna method of gardening and Melinda's got a great video and article about that online and it's really simple you can get your materials you can start getting your materials now and that you can store and then the other ones you can get in the spring and then another one is a natural dye so and this is what Native Americans did for Eons. There's a lot of things you can use for natural dye, not yeah. just grass clippings, but like uh, beet, like use beets for that. Some people have even used coffee grounds. Um, I tried dyeing my hair with coffee, coffee once. It did darken it. Right. That was interesting. But yeah, so you can do a natural dye. So you could look up how to use grass clippings to make a natural dye. I'm going to assume you probably boil the grass clippings to get that that green the extraction of yeah. the, the pigmentation yeah and then so you could do like Easter eggs um, so that would be kind of fun or even organic fabric dye um, but keep in mind that there's probably going to be some kind of odor that comes off of these weeds or grasses right uh, and it makes sense I mean if you ever get a grass stain on your your pants or whatever you do have to pre-treat that to get it out of your clothes usually so and uh, the eighth one here is uh, if you don't uh, if you're producing way more grass clippings than you can handle you can take them there are recycling facilities like where you can take and they'll compost it like the city has uh in most areas and i believe milwaukee is is one of those areas but uh try to use the other methods first before you just haul your grass clippings off to the recycling center and one thing you do not want to do you do not want to burn them so there's laws about this where the smoke the thick smoke can be harmful to the health and the environment i'm assuming it's because of the high nitrogen Right. Um, now, if, you, if they're all dry and you burn it, that's, a, that's like totally different. We're talking about greens, uh, the, the actual green grass that you're trying to burn. Green, wet material does not burn very well. It smolders, and that's a lot of why they're saying that you should not and can't do that based on the laws and uh, restrictions in your community. But try to do the other ones. Uh, compost it, mulch. Um, you can do the dyes if you want, or just leave it in the yard if you have too much. It will refertilize your yard and save you money on that, and you'll have a nice-looking lawn as well. Well, when we come back, we, well, we hope that has helped uh, you in utilizing the re free re resources that you have on your property in the form of grass clippings. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day, uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. 
Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.